Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back for week 8 of the National Pokeball League, the NPL. We are here this week for our game against the Tampa Bay Frogadiers. Frogadiers, excuse me. Coached by my good friend, Verd. If you guys don't know Verd, definitely go and check him out in the description down below. He's a great player. We faced off last season when I replaced Chris uh, in the NPL and uh, he tore me a new one. Uh, so definitely you're going to want to go and check that out. So uh, I'm looking at, uh, at Verd's team. I've been helping him build... Uh, and uh, and mock throughout the season as well. So I know his I'm very familiar with his team. Uh, the only problem is that he, he got Shaman uh, from Chris, and it's the second time that I have to face off against Shaman, and I know how potent Shaman is against my team, so I'm very scared of it. Uh, but let's go over his team. He's got Mega Deancey, Hydreigon, Gengar, uh, Necrozma, Gliscor, Shaman, Magnezone, Raquanid, Talonflame, and Hariyama. So a few things that I notice about his team right off the bat. One, his fastest speed outside of Talonflame is base 110 with Mega Deancey and, and Gengar. So that's something that I can very well take advantage of. Uh, as you can see with the Mon on your screen, we've got Coco here outspeeding uh, Ataflame, uh, Adam and Talonflame. So that's uh, that was the idea behind the speed, but I won't go into the set just yet. Another thing that I noticed about his team is that uh, it's very, extremely offensive, uh, and he's been using it as such throughout the entirety of the season. Uh, while it does have good defensive checks uh, to certain things like Talonflame, uh, can be run defensively, Shaman, Gliscor, Necrozma, so on. Uh, he's been running his Mons very offensively, so I know that about Verd. Um, and that's, uh, that's pretty much all there is to say, really. Uh, he's got a very scary team offensively against me, but I think I'm prepped for it. So, let's get into the team. we got Captain Crunch coming this week with an air balloon now. <laughs> um... David pointed this out to me. He's like, why would you try to nerf your own ability? Uh, basically, I'm, I'm removing my own uh, my own boost on my Thunderbolt. But as you guys can see, we're a Calm Mind Roost set. So the only thing that really breaks this is Scarfed Gengar uh, can really pop through this. Other than that, his Gliscor being the, f the fact that I'm off the ground means that it's set up fodder for me. If it doesn't have anything like Toxic or another attack like Knockoff. Uh, and his best revengers to this are, are honestly Scarfers like Hydreigon, uh, which carry ground coverage uh, for Tapu Koko, like Earth Power or Earthquake, for example. So this is a very easy setup mon for me this game, I feel. If I come in on Gliscor, if I come in on a, a defensive Shaman, uh, a locked Hydreigon into like Dark Pulse or, or a Dragon move, of course, uh, a non-boosting Necrozma, uh, a Magnezone. Uh, that's locked into an electric move once again. Uh, there are a lot of setup opportunities for me with this mon, and there are a lot of instances where I can get my balloon broken, uh, and I don't necessarily always need my balloon. My balloon is just to ensure that I have a way to come in on his Gliscor, and then just make it easy setup fodder for me. Uh, his Mega Deancey also uh, needs to Moonblast me with a, uh, with a, a Calm Mind Up, it can't kill me. So that's the idea there. Thunderbolt HPIs hits everything, literally everything on his team. Um, except for the Magnezone, of course it resists both, but Magnezone isn't too specially defensive, uh, and I can set up Calm Minds on it, so long as it's not like, um, I believe it's, uh, wh what's the name of the ability? <laughs> the same one that, uh, that Starmie gets, uh, Analytic. If it's not Analytic, uh, with, uh, Flash Cannon, and, it, like, Max Special Attack Modest, I can set up on it pretty much for free. So, uh, that's the idea there, and of course, as I mentioned, I am outspeeding Max Adam and Talonflame. Uh, so that's also the idea there. Moving on to the next man Mon, we have Mad, the uh, the Choice Scarf Diggersby. So uh, I did want to start bringing different sets on D Diggersby other than Choice, but I really feel like this uh, fits the bill this week. Uh, I am speed creeping. I believe it's his speed creep of me speed creeping his base 110s, essentially. Uh, so I'm trying to beat that with this speed. 244 hits like uh, 356, I believe it is. Uh, we've got Max Attack Adamant with 48 uh, HP. Ice Punch is the move I'm probably going to be locking myself into most often because it does hit the Gliscor and the Shaman, uh, as well as chipping away at, the, at things like the Necrozma, the Gengar, the, the, the Hydra for super effective, of course, and the Mega Deancey really well. Uh, Earthquake is only once all of his Earthquake responses are gone. Return is a good move to lock into, too, uh, at the end of the game, and U-Turn is very nice for momentum on things like Necrozma if it's fully defensive, his Gliscor, for example, uh, even Shaman, uh, if it doesn't come as a Choice Scarfer as well. So I feel like uh, this Diggersby just, just fits this team uh, this week. You'll see as we get on uh, with the other Mons, it really pairs well. So next up, we got Terror, the Mega Aerodactyl, uh, coming this week with Crunch, Aqua Tail, Aerial Ace, and Roost. So uh, as you can see, my coverage hits everything except for the Magnezone. Now, uh, I did mention that Magnezone is potentially one of my setup targets for Coco. And Earthquake is very obvious <laughs> on Mega Arrow because he has a Mega Deancey and he has a Magnezone. So I want to make him think that I have Earthquake, 
Uh, and until I reveal all of my coverage, he won't know if I have it or not. So, uh, with this speed, I'm not speeding max Jolly Talonflame, because I know that I aggressively speed creep a lot, and I wanted to be able to cover every single speed, just in case he brings, like, Z Steel Wing Talonflame. We didn't talk about it, but Necrozma and Talonflame are Zemons. I really expect Z Necrozma, though. That's, that's the big one. Um, got 188 to HP with, um, with 252 attack, so pretty much I'm making sure that I can 2-hit KO a Gliscor, uh, with Aqua Tail. Uh, Aerial Ace really hits the Hariyama, the Araquanid, and the, uh, the High Dragon decently. Uh, and then I've got Crunch, which of course hits in the Necrozma and the Gengar. Uh, and uh, Aerial Ace also hits the Shaman, excuse me, I did miss that one. Uh, but that, that Aerial Ace is super effective on 3, Crunch is super effective on 2, and then Aqua Tail is super effective on another 2, and his team is made up of 10 Mons. So the only Mons I don't have super effective coverage for are the Hydra, which doesn't really want to switch into hits from Arrow anyway, uh, and the Magnezone, which I could be carrying Earthquake, so that's that's why I decided on this coverage. And then Roost just keeps me alive uh, decently long uh, against this team. Let's say a Loctite Dragon into... into um, Draco Meteor, I can always roost on that, or as well as a, uh, a non-choice Scarf Gengar just to scout the damage, see if he's choice specs, whatever. So that's uh, that's the idea there. Moving on, we have Dehuan, my uh, my Mega Deancey check. So I'm uh, bringing Amoongus this week. Uh, it's got Giga Drain, Payback, Spore, and Toxic. I'll explain the set. Giga Drain is obviously hit to, to hit the Mega Deancey. I need the Pyapa Berry that I have right there because Deancey does have access to Psychic, and Psychic is scary for uh, Amoongus uh, because it can... I am maxed a sped F, as you can see, but it, it obviously is very, very threatening. Uh, payback is there for the Gengar because it hits it harder than foul play. Um, it, and most of the time, you'd want to stay in, I want to say, to really weaken down the Amoongus, put it in range of Mega Deancey and Hydreigon and, and the likes. Uh, and then I've got Spore, of course, because he's got a few things off the ground. Uh, that aren't affected uh, by electric terrain such as Hydreigon uh, and his Gliscor before the uh, before the Toxic Orb, as well as his Talonflame. Uh, so that's all really, really good to spore. And uh, finally, we got Toxic. So Toxic is there for mainly the Necrozma. If I feel that I can uh, stay in on it for uh, whatever reason, his Hydreigon, uh, his Araquanid as well, seeing as I check it decently well, even though I'm not Fizz Def, uh, I can still take hits from it because I do resist its main stab and the other one's neutral. So that's uh, that's the idea there. And Toxic also wears down the Hariyama if it's not Guts. So yeah, that's uh, that's Dohan. Nothing much more to say there. Moving on, we've got RC is 50% or Silvali Dark. Now. It's probably the most integral member to the team. This is what kind of glues the team together because his Necrozma and his Gengar are huge, massive threats to me. I've EV'd myself in a way uh, with my HP and my Spideff to make sure that if rocks aren't up and I switch into Necrozma and he's unboosted and he goes for a Z, a modest 252, so max special attack, Z signal beam, which is the hardest thing he can hit me with, that he won't knock me out. I'll take 99.7. So I'm, I'm right out of range of that. I'm max attack because I want to hit the Necrozma as hard as possible, as well as catching the Gengar with Pursuit if it locks in a Shadow Ball. I've got U-Turn on there because that's nice momentum for the Shaman. It pairs up well with Diggersby on my team, and it also hits the High Dragon and the Shaman that I just mentioned for super effective damage. It gets me out of bad situations as well, uh, such as against the Gliscor and whatnot. If it's not running any speed, uh, I will outspeed it. That's why I've got the 24 in the speed. And uh, as you can see, the last move on the set is Iron Head. So this is mainly to catch the Deancey switch, because Deancey should be a free switch in most cases for uh, Silvali Dark. And uh, you guys are going to see uh, something during the game, but I'll explain further when we get there. Uh, but that's Silvali Dark, again, very straightforward. And finally, um, this team, as you can see, does not deal with Magnezone well, outside of switching into its electric moves with Diggersby. But steel moves just mess it up. Like, Flash Cannon's going to mess this team up. So I decided to go with Como as my last one, especially defensive, max HP uh, with 184 spadef and uh, a careful nature. I've got Earthquake and Dragon Claw. Earthquake, of course, covers uh, the Magnezone as well as the Deancey switch if he feels that that's safe. Uh, and it also covers... Uh, well, I mean, it's it's a decent move to hit his team across. It covers the Gengar too, uh, and I am specially defensive. I can switch into Shadow Ball uh, as well because of Bulletproof, so that's always nice. I've got 16 attack. I think that was to make sure that I could Oko a max HP... Uh, a max HP Magnezone after rocks, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you guys can count that yourselves if you want to. Uh, Toxic is there uh, for the 
Uh, again, the Deancey switch is nicely covered. The Necrozma as well, because that's a pretty safe switch in Nekomo a lot of the time if it's max defense. And uh, also forces the Shaman to eventually switch. Uh, covers the Talon Flame as well. Dragon Claw is there because it hits everything that Earthquake does into essentially neutrally. So that's really nice. And then Stealth Rocks because I'm going to need them for uh, a couple of his uh, of his threats chipping away at them. Mainly the Talon Flame if it decides to come. Um, but as you guys are going to see... A lot of people are very, very scared to bring their flying types against me this season. Uh, Danzo was the first with his torn, and uh, Vert is actually the second. We're going to hop right into the game here. Uh, he decides to uh, not bring Talonflame, and he brings instead Magnezone, Gliscor, Shaman, Mega Deancey, Hariyama, and uh, Necrozma. Now, Hariyama I was kind of perplexed about. I didn't expect it to come, uh, but I knew how much of a threat to my team it was. It's just that it's really slow, <laughs> and it's very easily revenged by, by faster bonds, but it makes sense. Uh, it's definitely a great breaker against me, and uh, it's actually even more terrifying than you can even imagine, as we're going to get into this game right now. I'm going to click play, and we're going to see that the Gliscor leads off against my Diggers V. Now, uh, I can Ice Punch turn one pretty freely. A lot of people have a tendency of staying in with their Gliscors against um, Diggers V, especially when I did mocks. Uh, I know that Vert is a smart player, I know that he knows that I can have Ice Punch, but I'm just going to go for it anyway. He's going to end up going into a Shaman, which is great for me, I'm going to get off 50% on this thing, and see that it's Leftovers and not Life Orb, so sigh of relief right there. I'm going to go into Amoongus risking my uh, Pyopa Berry on a potential Psychic on the following turn, but I know that Vert is more than likely not going to want to stay in with his Shaman and take a Sludge Bomb that I could be carrying. So I instead decide to Spore, seeing that the rest of his team is uh, not immune to Spore as his uh, Gliscor never got a chance to get off its Toxicord. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, and I'm going to put the Magnezone to sleep. Now this is pretty big because if you guys remember the team builder, I said that Como was my only real response to Magnezone, and Como is not the best response. It can come in like once, maybe twice uh, on the mag and deal with it, but no more than that. So I'm really glad that this thing's asleep. As a result, I am going to end up switching out here, and I bring in my Como as he brings in his Hariyama. I'm going to get a Brox. He's going to go for Ice Punch, and it does 63%. Now, there are two uh, valid sets that this thing could be. Uh, I'm actually going to look up Hariyama real quick. Hariyama. Uh, hold on. Hariyama. And I'm going to show you guys. Uh, one of its abilities, uh, you guys can't see it on screen. Maybe if I do this, uh, you'll be able to see it if I scroll down. Yeah. Uh, one of the abilities down here, you still can't see it, it doesn't matter. Uh, its hidden ability is Sheer Force. So it could very well be Sheer Force um, with a Life Orb and Ice Punch. That's definitely possible, but the roll would indicate that he wouldn't be adamant. And that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So as a result, I end up figuring out that this thing is more than likely like Thick Fat plus Choice Band adamant. Now I'm looking at my team, and I'm looking at my Ice Punch switch-ins, and I'm like, crap, I don't have anything for this thing. Basically, I need to play around this thing properly. His Magnezone's asleep. I know that I don't need Como as much anymore. So I'm going to end up going for a Toxic on this following turn and putting this thing on a timer, which is going to be crucial. He's going to go for Ice Punch, that's fine. I'm going to go into Arrow here on this turn, and instead of clicking Aerial Ace, I'm actually going to click Aqua Tail. Now, this is not a prediction of him going into Deancey or Gliscor, because I could always just switch up my move on the following turn. What I actually wanted to do here was go for Aqua Tail, have him hit me with an Ice Punch, not knock me out based on what I had calced, and then roost on the following turn and roost stall his Hariyama. The reason that I did this is because Aerial Ace doesn't knock him out anyway. And if I go for Aerial Ace, then I'm not permitted essentially to... Well, I could roost on the following turn, but I prefer to go for Aqua Tail because not only does it cover the switches, but it also allows me the chance to roost. And if I crit the Aerial Ace uh, as he goes for a uh, an Ice Punch and Toxic ends up knocking him out, then I end up with like a 3% Aerodactyl. And that's horrible for me because I can't come in on rocks later. So I decide instead, I'm going to go for Aqua Tail. I'm going to hit this thing pretty hard with the Aqua Tail. It's going to do 38%. He's going to go for the Ice Punch. I'm going to end up at... 10% and I'm going to go for a Roost on the following turn as he's going to end up switching out into his Necrozma. Very good play on his part. Uh, I get off the Roost and I'm going to get right out of here. I'm going to go into Silvali Dark. He's going to go for the Psy Shock. I catch it correctly, thank God. Uh, and he ends up switching out into his Deancey on my multi-attack. Now, before I click play, I want to show you guys a little clip uh, from a mock that I had with Adam. And it's about to come up on screen. Uh, hopefully the layout doesn't obstruct it. It does not. Okay, so this is uh, this is the clip. Uh, 
as you can see, Adam ends up going for Photon Geyser. I go for multi-attack. He scouts the damage, sees that it does about 45%. Goes out into his Deancey as I click multi-attack again. And what I'm going to do on the following turn is I'm actually going to go directly for an Iron Head, knowing, knowing full well that he's probably not going to click Moonblast. And I even tell Adam in the chat, as you guys are going to see come up on the bottom of your screen, I said, so predictable, and that's exactly what Verd will do. Not that Verd is a predictable player, it's just that the situation in itself is very predictable, and I'm a Silvaldi Dark. I absolutely need this thing for the Necrozma. It's very obvious. It's it's blatant. It's in his face. So, and I have a, a, a an Amoongus on my side, which he can switch into with virtually anything. So, I instead am going to click Iron Head. And as predicted, Verd is not necessarily going to go for Calm Mind. He ends up going for Rocks, and I knock out the Deancey on this turn, which is very, very crucial. Deancey is no longer a threat to me. It's not there anymore. All I have to deal with are his slower mons. Uh, and as you can see, his team is extremely slow. So even, like, uh, this Silvali Dark pretty much outspeeds everything at this point. So he's going to bring in his Hariyama. Uh, I'm going to end up going for a U-turn. I don't need my Amoongus anymore, so I'm going to go into it on the Ice Punch, which I know he's going for. And uh, that's going to take a tremendous amount of damage. But he's going to end up dropping to essentially another round of Toxic. Uh, plus Rocks plus Toxic if he switches out. So I'm going to go into my Arrow. This time I'm going to just knock him out with an Aerial Ace. Take him out. And uh, now he's going to go into his Necrozma. And I'm going to start crunching this thing. Uh, and it's not doing that much. It's doing 36. And he ends up being Calm Mind. So uh, that's a big deal. I'm just going for defense drops at this point. Uh, and he's gonna just keep moonlighting. I'm trying to just get a 20% defense drop or a crit or something trying to keep him uh, for, I'm trying to make him use up all his moonlights essentially. I've seen Psyshock. I don't know what his last move is I'm still predicting signal beam, uh, but I'm pretty confident uh, based on this damage from crunch that my Silvali is faster He cannot run enough speed to outspeed my Silvali if he uh, has this much much defense essentially So I'm just gonna keep spamming crunch I never end up getting the defense drop and he's gonna knock me out with a Psyshock, which is fine uh, I'm going to go into my Silvali, and uh, I'm going to start spamming multi-attack, which does uh, 43%. And uh, he just keeps going for Moonlight. He's not leftovers, though. Uh, so I'm expecting a Z-move. Right there, as you guys can see, I got a crit. So I believe he was down to, I think it was four Moonlights, uh, if I counted correctly. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. And then the first one that he went on my first multi-attack, which is six. And this is actually the seventh. Now, for him to get out of range of two-hit KO on the um, on the multi-attack, he would have needed way more Moonlights. So I don't think the crit mattered. Uh, ultimately, he's forced to fire off a Z-move, which doesn't end up killing me because I'm very specially defensive investment uh, invested. That was Earth Power. Uh, and I'm just going to keep spamming multi-attack. End up taking out the Necrozma. His Magnezone's going to come in. It hasn't burnt a turn of sleep yet. I end up being faster. Uh, he gets the... Uh, he, I get to hit him twice, essentially, but he doesn't even wake up on the second turn. Very unfortunate. Uh, I am just going to go for another multi-attack. He reveals that he has Protect. Uh, either Protect or it was a crazy speed tie. Uh, because I, uh, I'm i at 232 speed, and I don't understand why he would go to 232 speed unless he wanted to speed tie this specific Silvali. So, uh, kind of weird, but I'm, I'm pretty convinced that it was Protect. Everybody else mentioned it after the game. I didn't even see it when it happened, uh, but if it was Protect, then it didn't end up mattering, I don't think. Uh, so he's going to go down. He's now going to go into a Shaman. I'm going to click a U-turn. He's going to click Protect. Uh, obviously, he's going to get a turn of Leftovers right here. Good play on his part. Uh, and uh, we're just going to go for another uh, U-turn. Seed Flare hits. Good. And uh, now we're going to get in our Coco. And I think he was expecting Z-Gleam on this turn. So he ends up protecting as I end up going for... Well, actually, I'm on a Balloon. So he has no reason to expect a Z-Move. Uh, I end up going for Calm Mind. And uh, he protects. I end up going for another Calm Mind. He goes for a Seed Flare. Drops my Spadef with the uh, with the Seed Flare. Breaks my Balloon. So now I'm forced to, uh, to Hidden Power Ice. But that's fine because Hidden Power Ice into Ice Punch knocks this thing out. And Gliscor comes in on rocks so that should be game gonna go for the hidden power unless he's some crazy like fighting move on on gliscor that i'm not aware of and he's choice scarfed as well uh, i should be fine with diggersby so i'm just gonna click ice punch he can't switch out his shaman ice punch does way too much it does 50 uh so we're gonna knock out the shaman right here and as you guys are gonna see on the following turn bird's gonna bring in his gliscor and we are going to uh get a clean knockout on the gliscor hangman page goes down and we end up winning 1-0 so uh we are now seven and one with a plus uh 18 differential i believe um 
And Verd drops to 4 and 4, of course, with a plus 3, which is still very good. I think Verd's still going to make playoffs. I hope he does, because we've been building and, and uh, mocking each other all season. Um, building with each other and mocking each other all season. And uh, I really hope he makes it, because I'm a big fan of Verd. Uh, we've been uh, we've gotten closer this season, I would say. Uh, really like the guy. You guys should definitely go and check him out. Um, really happy with the way that I've been playing this season. And actually, guys... Um, I'll let you go and check out the other games, of course, no spoilers, go and check out everybody else's games, links are in the description down below, but if you're still here, if you haven't clicked off the video yet, then uh, I want to announce that I am the first team to clinch playoffs. Um, I ended up playing this game before Gypsy, so I don't know Gypsy's result actually for, for week 8, I have no clue uh, what it was. So uh, I'm not even looking at the sheet or anything. So I have no idea if he won or if he lost, uh, if he clinched playoffs as well. Uh, but I know that I did with the 7-1 record. And now unless I absolutely bomb the last two weeks uh, against Dallas and Matty, um, Dallas who is replacing Trev by the way, uh, and Matty, unless I absolutely bomb those weeks and Matty has a hell of a last two games, uh, then I'm pretty much guaranteed first place as well because I believe Maddie is right behind me with uh, with three losses already. So that's, uh, that's it's looking good. Uh, we've made playoffs, so we're guaranteed that. I'm gonna be bringing a little more of a, a strange team next week, so I'm still gonna have a team builder, obviously, so you guys can see what the sets are and what I was thinking, but it's, it's not such a serious team, because to me it doesn't matter as much, and I know that the game doesn't matter to Dallas either, uh, because even if he makes playoffs, he's gonna relinquish his spot, uh, supposedly, to the, uh, to the fifth place player, so we'll see. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's it for week eight, guys. We uh, we did make playoffs, so woohoo! Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to the playoffs in the NPL. I uh, haven't been in playoffs since the D League, so this is going to be fun. And I uh, hope you guys are still cheering us on, doing pretty well. And uh, thanks again for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.